Wood wants me to, to tell you briefly, whoever you are out there, if, you're not, if you haven't been listening to me for years, or if you're listening to me for years and you don't understand this, it's really important, especially if you are offended or upset that I talk, I talk about the supernal mother. Let me reiterate to you who the supernal mother is. She's not the supernal mother of Catholicism. She is not Mary, the human woman that gave birth to Jesus of Nazareth, the human baby. She's not the deity that the Catholic Church adores, who has taken the name uh, Mary. Okay. She is the third grade of power of the 10 degrees of the Sephardic array. I mentioned to you earlier that Christ in you is, is Jesus' finger, that he's represented to us so that we can understand, so that we have some level of understanding. He's represented to us as the 10 Sephardic. And by relating to these various Sephardic we've been able to acquire a degree of spiritual understanding that I personally don't see how I could have ever understood without this um, technique. It's a technique that's not, it's not, I don't want to say it's not real, it is real, but the way it's expressed, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to mislead you, okay? It's a technique uh, by which we can understand spiritual things, this concept of the ten sefer, or at least, let, let me just leave it at that. That, I mean, we could say that about me, that Sheila can be represented to you as 10 separate, you know, as 10 degrees of power. And uh, when I talk to you on this level, I'm speaking under one degree of power. And when I speak to when I'm actually giving you an exhortation under the Zohar, which is very high, I'm in another, I'm in a higher degree of power, coming from a higher place. Yeah. So. Um, the supernal mother, God is male and female. Well, God, the, the Ansaf, the eternal one, he's neither male nor female. He's, we not, I, mean, I don't even know how to describe what he is. Nobody can describe what he is. The one that's always existed, the eternal one. And then he sends forth aspects of himself to try to communicate with us. Well, he sent forth an aspect of himself to bring this creation into existence. And that aspect of himself is called ancient Adam. We read about him in, in um, Daniel chapter 7. And uh, he's, the, he's called the ancient of days. That's actually a finger, so to speak, okay, of the eternal one. That's inside of an empty space where, where creation is being formed, in the midst of the eternal one, because there can't be anything outside of him. So this ancient of days how do we understand him? We can't, so, so we'll express him as ten, an, a, 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 a sophratic array of 10 degrees, 10 different spheres, spiritual spheres, that are even more subtle than the atoms, than the atomic structure of this world. They're invisible, you know, totally invisible, even more so than the subatomic particles. They're, they're deeper than the subatomic particles. And, uh, and that Sephardic array is both male and female for the purpose of helping our little pea brains understand the spiritual interactions that go on in the spiritual plane. Some of the Sephardic are male and some of the Sephardic are female. And the 10 of them are separated into three major categories. Wherever this, wherever this 10 degree Sephardic array exists, to represent, to represent um, ancient Adam, to represent me, to rep represent the second Adam or the first Adam. The, the ten are always divided into three sections, three unequal sections. And the top section is called the upper triad, and that's the, and that is the 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 Keter, uh, It's called crown. Without redoing this whole thing, then comes the father, and then comes the mother. So there's a male and female aspect. There's, an, there's a male and female aspect, and the Ketcher is the unification of the two of them, the mother and the father. And at the top of the mother and the father, there's a, uh, a unification of the two that's higher than either the mother or the father. Unification is higher. And that's who the supernal mother is. She's the third degree of power of the, of the ten degrees of the Sephardic array of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every, and every one of the separate is associated with the name of God. 
and the name of God associated with the Supernal Mother is Elohim. So she is God. She comes from the, the God world and emanation. She said, that's who I'm talking about when I say the Supernal Mother. And, and my, my revelation today, as I understand it today, um, um, amongst the most recent revelations that the Lord has given us, is certainly with, to do with Melchizedek, is that the, the upper worlds are, as far as we're concerned, there are many worlds higher than our worlds, but as far as creation is concerned, the upper worlds, the term the upper worlds, refer to the world of emanation, which is the God world, and the world of creation. The world of creation is underneath the world of emanation and is being created by the world of emanation. And out of all the ten separate of the world of emanation that are actually doing the creative work, actually bringing the world of creation into existence, is the third degree of power called the Supernal Mother. And the, create, the world of creation, that which is being created, which is actually righteous Adam, okay, and it, it is being created in parts. It, it is the second Adam. See? The second Adam is really only one Adam. The first Adam had an accident. Okay? The first Adam had an accident. And, uh, and the second Adam uh, is, is being formed now. And part of his job is to is to rescue the first Adam. The only the only part of the creation that's being destroyed is that which was born that had no right to be born, which is the offspring of the adultery. See, it was an adultery between the, the female side of Adam because everything everything in the spiritual plane is both male and female. So Adam had a female side to himself. He was male and female. That should be obvious to anyone who reads the scripture. He was male and female. Let us make them male and female. Genesis chapter, chapter 1. Okay. So the female side of Adam, instead of... Co and, and it's all about spiritual sex. So if, you, if you're prurient, if you're, if you're getting some kind of a sexual rise out of what I teach, well, you shouldn't be here. It, it won't go well for you. We're trying to understand spiritual things and spiritual principles that the Lord wants to teach us that, that are based upon human sexuality because we are a reflection of the higher worlds. And by having some knowledge of human sexuality, it will help us to understand what's happening in the spirit, that the Creator is male and a husband to the creation, and that He loves the creation as a man loves his wife. He, and he wants, that's why he gave me a 30 gallon water tank. Because he really loves me. And if you can hear this, he sacrificed that plumber for me because that poor man had one hard time installing that, that 30 gallon tank and he was all upset for a moment. He was all upset. He didn't think he could get it in. And he's in my house saying, well, the plumbing supply guy, he said, I could do it. And I, I, I carried in this big uh, tank. I carried, carried it into my truck. I carried it from my truck into your house. And he doesn't have a 20-gallon tank. And what am I going to do? The guy was all upset. And he was upset the whole time he was installing it. And you can hear that. He was sacrificed for my pleasure, for my pleasure. What sacrificed that man? Now. Isn't that cruel of God? No, the man got something out of it. What did he get out of it? Well, he succeeded. He succeeded in doing something he never thought he could do. So he went home and he told his wife, and he told his son, and he told his fellow plumbers, you won't believe what I did the other day. I got a 30-gallon tank in a place where it was impossible to get it in. <sighs> Brethren, we need to understand the mind of God. You need to understand the mind of God. On every level, it's the same principle on every level. He will give us hard things to do. He will sacrifice us, but it will always work for our good. You need to know that about him. So that's who the supernal mother is. If that's upsetting anybody that's listening to me these days. <laughs>